All right then, my friends. So the first step is to install PHP onto our computer so we can start to play around with it locally, okay? So we need to install PHP, but we also need to install a database, MySQL too, because later on in the course, we're gonna be storing data in this MySQL database. And that data would be something like user data or maybe football scores for a football website or even reviews for products or something like that. And then PHP is going to communicate with that database when we need it to show it in the HTML templates. OK, and we'll delve into all of that stuff later on. But either way, that's two things we now need to install PHP and a MySQL database. Now, we also need to think about how we're going to serve up our PHP files. Remember, I said that PHP runs on a server. So we're going to need some kind of local development server as well, setting up on our computer too, to run all of the PHP code on. So that's three things now. We need PHP, MySQL, and some kind of local development server setting up. Now, I guess if we had the predisposition to do so and the time, we could install all of these things independently and set them up, but I don't want to do that. Instead, what I'm going to do is point you into the direction of this tool called XAMPP, which is going to install all of those things for you, or you can pronounce it as XAMPP, it's up to you. But this stands for cross-platform, that's the X, so you can use it on Windows or Linux or Mac. Apache, that's the server we're going to be using, the local development server. MariaDB, this is just like a fork of MySQL. It runs pretty much exactly the same way. We'll be using that for the database, PHP and Perl. This is like an added extra on the end. OK, so we're going to install this and that's going to take care of all of those things that we need for us. All we have to do is click the install button. And by the way, I will leave this link down below so you can click on that to go and download it. Click on this button to install it. That's going to download it over here. When that downloads, just click it to run the installer. All right then, so I've gone ahead and booted up that file that we've just downloaded, the installer. So just click on next, first of all. These are the things we're going to install. Just leave those as is and click next again. This is where we're going to install it to. So in the C drive, then the XAMPP folder, click next again. And then I'm going to uncheck this to learn more about Bitnami and click next again. Finally, click next again, and that's gonna start installing all of these different things onto your computer. So when that's finished, it's gonna ask you if you want to start the control panel now, keep that checked and click on finish. So then choose your language and you're gonna see this control panel right here. Okay, so this is where we're gonna be starting up the different services that we need. We have PHP installed on our computer now, so we can run that, but we have this module right here, Apache, which is going to be our development server. So we're going to start that up now. We also have MySQL as well. We're going to start that up later. We don't really need that just yet. And these are the two things we're going to be using, right? So we can see now this is green and it started up on port 80. So if we go now to admin, then this is going to open up a web browser. It's opened on my other screen. So let me just scoot this over here. And notice now at the top, we've gone to localhost forward slash dashboard, okay? Now, if you get a port error at this point, what you need to do is change the port number that Apache listens to, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But anyway, this page is being served up from that local development server that we just enabled, Apache. So this local hosting at the top, this basically means our computer is being used as a server to send us this page. Normally, when we go to a website URL, we're communicating with a server somewhere else to get a web page back. Localhost just means that we're communicating with our own computer to get a web page back because Apache is running on our computer, right? So our computer now is acting as the server to send us back this web page. Now, oftentimes when you develop locally on your computer, you're going to be using this localhost to preview your website, not just when using PHP, but other programming languages as well. So anyway, let me first of all show you how to change the port number in case this is not working for you. So what you need to do is go to config right here and then open up this Apache config at the top. Then just scroll down a little bit to where it says listen. And you can see right here, I'm listening to port 80. You just change that to something else. For example, if I say port 8090 and then save, I'm going to cross that off. If I stop this, first of all, then start it again and go to admin, then scoot this across again. First of all, you'll get an error. But if I now say localhost, then colon, and we said 8090, then enter, 
now we get it okay so now the port number is listed up here so I'm actually going to go back into the config and I'm going to change this back to 80 to keep it as default but if yours doesn't work then you can change it right here I know if you have Skype installed on your computer I think that listens to port 80 as well so there might be some conflicts so you can always change it here or change the port that Skype listens to entirely your choice okay but either way now we've done that I'm going to start it up again we're listening to port 80 again so anyway this web page up here this thing where is it actually coming from on our computer we know that we're using this local development server now apache to serve this up but where is this web page actually being served from on our computer well whenever we use xamp our web pages are being served from a folder called htdocs in the xamp directory and we can find that if we go to a file explorer go to c and then we installed it under xamp and we can see now htdocs right here okay so this is where all of our different stuff our web pages are being served from so inside this folder you can see this dashboard folder as well and if we click on there we're going to see down here we have an index file as well so this is the page that's being served right up here because we can see we're in the dashboard directory now by default if we navigate to a directory in the url over here the server is going to look inside that directory and automatically try to serve up an index.html file or an index.php file if they exist and they do in this case we can see that right here okay it's an html document so it's automatically serving that up when we go to forward slash dashboard let me just do another test for you i'm going to go back a directory and create a new folder and I'm going to call this test and then inside that I'm going to create a new file and this new file is going to be called test.html so I'm going to go down to text document and call it test.html now I'm going to double click to open this and just say hello and save that now if I cross that off and go to now forward slash test and press enter then we're going to get this thing right here now we see this text thing on the end of this that's actually because this is a text file so what I'm going to do is delete this and I'm going to go to new again and I'm going to create another text file this time I'm going to double click and I'm going to say hello and I'm going to say file save as and then go to all files instead of text document and I'm going to save it as index.html this time and this should work so save that and if we hit enter again now we automatically see that index.html file because it's gone to this directory right here it's automatically serving up that index file because it can find it okay so if we go to just localhost without the forward slash dashboard if we click enter then we still get this page and we can see it's changed to dashboard up here so what's happening there well that's because when it goes to forward slash without the dashboard it's looking in here and it finds this index file right here okay now what i'm going to do is just open that file up inside sublime so open file and i'm going to go to windows then xamp and then into htdocs and then i'm going to open up this file right here so this here is some php code that is running so when we go to just localhost without forward slash dashboard it's finding this index php file and it's running that on the server and it runs this code now don't worry too much about what this code looks like or what it's doing but essentially this line here is redirecting us to forward slash dashboard which is why we then get directed to forward slash dashboard and we get that index file inside the dashboard instead okay so anyway i know maybe a lot of this stuff maybe didn't make sense but now what we have is we have the apache server installed on our computer so we can now run php files on our computer using this server and serve up files to the browser as well so now we've got all that stuff sorted in the next video we're going to create our very first php file and run that on our computer